course, really about hitting some balls, getting a feel for the golf course, um, making some notes about what clubs I might hit, um, making some notes about the breeze as well, so that you know if I get here on Thursday and the wind's in the same direction, I know what I was doing. So um, yeah, it's just basically gathering info. You know, we've all, most of the guys have all played these courses before, and I have um, this week in Huntingdale, but um, yeah, it's still nice to be back out here and, and just uh, refreshing the mind with where your, where your lines are off tees and what clubs you're hitting on, on certain shots. And, and um, you know, I mean, it's all about preparing for Thursday, really. But um, the mistake I've made in the past is doing too much work um, in the early days of the week and being tired by Thursday. You know, so um, I want to be fresh by Thursday and feeling good about everything. So I try to keep things fairly light on a Monday and then um, Tuesday. I'll usually play it in if I'm definitely play it in if I'm not in the pro-am um, this week I'm in the pro-am so I might only play nine tomorrow yeah. and, and then um, the opposite nine to what I might play this afternoon and then I've played the course twice by Thursday yeah. got some good notes so we're on the third green we've just seen Matty's tee shot he's got about 12 feet maybe yeah. uh, and if we take a step back we can see your uh, your magic wand Long putter. Are you currently anchoring? Uh, yes, I you am. are. Yep. What are your plans for January one next year? Probably retire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been working pretty hard with my um, putting coach uh, back home in Brisbane, um, Cameron Strachan is his name, and um, so we've been working pretty hard with the short putter, as well as um, as having the potential option to continue using this length putter, but not anchoring it. So right. um, yeah, so there's a couple of options, but. Um, I remember having a chat to Adam Scott at on the putting green at Royal Pines um, uh, when the the rule came out, and I said to Scotty, um, I said, mate, what's the plans? What are you going to do for you know when the, the rule change happens? And he goes, I'm not really worried about that at the moment. Or what I think we should both do, mate, is just go and win as much as we can now and go fishing and think about it when it happens. Yeah. So <laughs> so I, I kind of I've been working pretty hard at this year, and I played a few events with the short putter. Um, so Queensland Open, I finished 10th, and then I made a cut up in Japan on the Japanese tour the week after with a short putter as well. So um, yeah, it's not probably as reliable as my long putter at the moment, but I've used the long putter since probably 2000. So right. you know, it's a big change for me. And yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm working hard at, at getting it ready, but at the, at the moment, it's all about the Aussie Auto Merit, the Aussie Summer, and, and getting my car back in Japan. So right. for the time being, I'll, I'll get the job done with what I know. So Perfect. and then work it out next year. Excellent. We've just seen an approach off from 110, you've hit a 48 degree wedge. The trajectory was just so low with, with so much spin. Talk us through that. Yeah, I think it's important um, when you're playing golf at this level, you've got to be able to control your flight and control your ball. And so there's times when I hit my 48 degree wedge when I want to hit it up here too. Know, um, to a tight pin over a bunker or something like that, you know, you want to get it high and flight it and soft and coming in that way. Um, when you're into the breeze, sometimes you've got to be able to control the flight and bring it down. So, um, interestingly, um, a few weeks ago in, Fiji, in Fiji, I got drawn with Fiji Singh in the third round, and um, yeah, it was an amazing experience playing with a former world number one and a major winner. And you know, it's a, it's a great experience to see where you're at, you know, and see, okay, well, how good is this guy who was world number one? versus where I'm at and, um, and it was amazing playing golf with him because it was windy as that week in Fiji and into the breeze, all the into the breeze holes where I was really controlling my flight and bringing it down, Fiji just kept hitting it at the same height and I was 30, 40 metres past him on all the into the breeze holes so I'm 30, 40 metres closer to the green and it you know, makes golf a lot easier but then down breeze because he had this higher flight he would launch it out there and he'd get it sort of a little bit further than me because I was hitting mine up but he'd get he you know, get a little bit more out of the downhill, but downwind holes. But his ability downwind to flight it super high with irons on par threes was what was really impressive. So um, I think playing in Australia, we play in a lot of wind. So if you've got that ability to trap the ball and get it a little lower into that breeze, you're going to have a lot of success playing wind golf. Um, for me, what I learned out of that day was that VJ had this class to be able to throw the ball high downwind and spin it. And that's something that I went, you know what, that's the shot I haven't got yet, I've got to go learn it. So, yeah. been working hard on that. But yeah, it's, it's all about being able to control the ball and, um, you know, if you can't, well then you're at the mercy of the wind a lot more too. You know, and so then you hit it up and we've all hit one up that's ballooned and <laughs> feels like it's going backwards. 
Um, and there are a few doing that in Fiji, that's for sure. But.